All right, so you've got all of your events inside of Planning Center Calendar, everything going on at your church. You've got your staff meetings, your Sunday service, small groups, all kinds of stuff is happening. But what happens when something changes? Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell you how to change one instance of a recurring event, like a weekly event or a monthly event. Uh, I'm gonna tell you how to change the pattern of a recurring event, which means if you were meeting on a Friday and now you're meeting on a Thursday. And then I'm gonna tell you when it's time to just bail out and uh, duplicate the event and start a new one, okay? So let's jump right in. Let's say we've got a men's group. This men's group meets every Friday from 6.30 a.m. to 7.30 a.m. You can see right there, that's the pattern that they meet at. Right now we're looking at January 21st, but if you hit this arrow right here, it'll take you to the next instance of the event, which is January 28th. Hit it again, it'll be February 4th, so on and so forth. But then if you hit the Sherlock button right here, also known as a magnifying glass, uh, it'll pop open this little miniature calendar where you can see all of the instances of the event and you can just go to the specific one that you wanna deal with. So let's say March 4th, for example, they need to meet at a different location. They can't meet at the church because there's some construction going on, right? Or maybe they can't meet on Friday, but they need to meet on Thursday for just this particular instance. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over here to edit, and we're gonna click edit this date. If we click this in future, it's gonna affect a whole bunch of instances, but we just want this particular date to be different. So we're gonna click this date, and then, if it was happening on March 4th, but it needs to happen on the 5th now, you can just click the 5th, and now the date will be different for this particular instance. Let's say they're meeting in a different location too. You were meeting in Atlanta, but now you're in Sydney. Quite a jump. So we can change that and say, save changes. This confirms the changes that you're making before you actually make them. So you can see it was on the 4th, now it's on the 5th. It was part of this pattern of events, but now it's its own little thing. We've yoinked it out of the pattern and put it by itself. So that's what it means when it says does not repeat. And the location was Atlanta, and now we're in Australia. So yes, make these changes. So you can see it's still part of the men's group event. It just happens on a different day. If we open up the magnifying glass again, we can see that it was on the fifth, but now it's, or it was on the fourth, but now it's on the fifth. And then we have all of the other instances that we wanna to go to. All right, so let's say things change with your group. People, uh, it was great for people to meet on a Friday, but now everybody needs to meet on Thursday. Maybe some new people joined, maybe some older people left, and now your schedule needs to change. Well, you can still keep this same men's group and just pick a date that you wanna change the pattern moving forward. So let's say March 25th is that date, right? So we'll go edit, and this time we're gonna pick this and future dates. We don't just wanna change March 25th, we wanna change March 25th and everything that comes after it. So we'll click on that. Same thing applies, if you wanna change the location for these dates, you can do that. If you wanna book different rooms and resources for these new dates, you can do that. But what we're focusing on right now is the recurrence pattern, how often this event recurs. So you, right now it says Friday from 6.30 to 7.30, right? So we'll go edit the recurrence. And now that we're not meeting on Fridays anymore, we're meeting on Thursdays, we'll move this to the 24th. And now it knows, hey, that's a Thursday. So we're gonna meet weekly every Thursday, all the way through June 30th. And you can change the end date from here if you want to. You can say it recurs forever and ever if you want to. And then when you hit submit and then save those changes, you can see it used to be Friday. Now it's Thursday. Yes, make these changes. And just like before, click on the Sherlock right here and you can see here were the events before and now it's on Thursday. Cool. So what if all of a sudden something outside of this realm of things needs to change, right? What if the event is called something different? What if there's some high level information for this event that's different now? Well, as you can see up top here on the overview tab, it says April 7th. That's anything on this page is pertaining to just April 7th. But if we need to change something about the men's group at large, like the name of the event, the tags that belong to the event, or really anything at all on the settings tab, who owns the event, the summary description of the event, then it's gonna to need to become its own separate event, unless you're okay with changing this whole thing. So if I change men's group to say co-ed group now, it's gonna change that for all instances of this event. But if you still want the men's group to go all the way up to this date and the co-ed group to begin at another date, but let's say it's using all the same rooms and resources, we'll go back to the overview tab here and we will choose to duplicate this event. So what duplicate does is it takes all the rooms and resources and schedule times from this event drops it into a brand new event. So we'll call this one co-ed group, and then we'll create it, and all of that information will come over, right? Well, so now we'll click duplicate, and it will create that event. 
Then what you need to do is go clean up your old event. So now that the co-ed group has taken over from April 7th on, we can go back to the men's group at April 7th, hit the trash can here, and then delete this and all future dates. So now the men's group stops at a certain point, the co-ed group begins at another point. So now that's it. Now you know how to manage uh, individual instances. You know how to change the location and the date. You know how to change the recurrence pattern. And now you know when and how to duplicate and create a brand new event.